Good evening, everybody. As we discuss in a quick 50 minutes or so, minimally invasive periodontics from diagnosis to treatment. Uh, I am on my second week of recovery from pneumonia. So if you hear me coughing, I apologize. I'm gonna to try to get through this with as little coughing as possible. For those of you that are gonna ask me questions tonight, I'll be happy to try to answer them. For those that may think of something after, I leave this slide up for a second because you could friend me at Vino Dentino on Instagram. It's right there at the bottom of your screen, Vino Dentino. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have by DMing me at Vino Dentino. So let's talk about the world of diagnostics. The world of diagnostics is the essence of what we do day in and day out. I'll always contend that any dental practice anywhere in the world will only be successful with great diagnostics. Because again, patients come to us for us to figure things out and for us to be right. And really, that's our job. Our job is to figure out those issues. And there's no question in some people, some of us do it better than others. And I'll be the first to admit that if you swim a lot of laps in the pool, if you've been doing this for a long time, well, then it's much, much easier to diagnose. And just, just yesterday, we had someone that came in complaining of pain on the bottom. She was an older lady. She gets pain when she chews. I took x-rays, nothing. Couldn't see anything. I got x-rays at the top. And she has pathology, periapical pathology on top. And that's what was giving her the trouble. So diagnosis just involves us putting the data set together in our head, using what we have clinically to come up with a solution to the problem. Now that could be radiographs, that could be tests, that could be cone beam, that could be a variety of things. But ultimately our goal is to come to the conclusion about the problem and then figure out how we're gonna go ahead and solve it. So when someone comes in with a problem, how do we solve the problem? Well, hopefully we're gonna do a thorough exam. We're gonna do a comprehensive thorough exam. We're gonna take some radiographs usually, and we may take a CBCT for those that have CBCT. We may take a CBCT as well. We'll then put the data set together and come up with the answer to what's going on. For the longest time, our practices struggled with our intraoral x ray imaging software. There were just so many bumps and so many glitches and it was difficult to move x-rays and send x-rays and all those types of things. Most recently, we switched our software and we found that switch to be incredibly, incredibly helpful to our practices. So does the software matter? I really do think the software matters. You need good sensors or phosphor plates, but the software definitely matters. What else matters? is your computer screen. So I always ask my groups, when was the last time you changed your computer monitors in your practice? If I let you think about that for a second, most of you would probably think to yourselves and say, I haven't done it in a while. Yet, if you go onto the Best Buy website or the Dell website or the B&H photo website, you'll see monitors that have 4K, that have advanced displays and all these things, which can make a huge difference with what we see and what we don't see. <clears throat> so I, and, and these monitors are inexpensive. So I would tell all of you tomorrow, go out and get new monitors if your monitors are old, or if you don't believe me, just change one, which is what happened to me. We brought one monitor broke, it died. We changed one, and then I said, wow, look how much better I see my x-rays on this one monitor. 
So for 230 bucks a monitor, we swapped them all in the office and it was a done deal. And we upgraded our, our monitors. So we updated our software to a company called Soda Cloud. You might have heard of Soda Cloud because they they've been Soda's been around for a while, and their Clio sensor, C L I O Clio sensor, is considered one of the best in the industry, and it competes with the best out there with the Dexuses of the world at a lower price point. So Soda decided to launch this past year a cloud-based dental imaging software. Why is cloud-based important? Well, it'll the most burden on our servers is our radiographic images. And by having a cloud-based software, one of the things we can do is remove the burden on our on our on our servers. But more importantly, because it's cloud-based, it works with everything. It's fully browser-based and secure. It's fast and it's got a lot of features. Cloud imaging is not new. But not, not a lot has changed till Soda Cloud changed recently. The software is, is ideally designed that myself and my staff have a much faster and easier workflow. They can move things around easily. They can store all your digital images under the same patient. They can store all your x-rays, anything they can store under. And probably in the next 6 to 12 months, you'll be able to store your CBCT images as well. So you get less clicks and more power to what you do. They also have built into this software a secondary product that requires a subscription called Pearl. Pearl is artificial intelligence for your radiographs. Pearl is able to scan your x-ray and point things out that you may not normally see, and you could then use that for patient education as well. It's fully browser based and it's secure and it's also mobile based. So I can look at x-rays if I'm on vacation, I could look at any of my offices from my phone and see things clearly. One of the biggest painstaking issues we always had is if I sent a patient to the perionist, I'd have to go through hoops in order to get the x-rays in an email sent over to him. With Soda, we have a few buttons, we click, we press, the x-rays drop in, our specialist is already saved in our system. We type in a note and the x-rays are off to our specialist. It's HIPAA compliant and secure, so we don't have any worries there as well. So we've changed our imaging to improve our diagnostics. We've also incorporated artificial intelligence that can simulate some of our problem solving issues and allow us to come to quicker decisions by pointing sec certain things out. This is a product called Pearl. Pearl is a standalone product that does integrate fully with soda and other imaging systems. The minute we take our x-rays, Pearl is visualized. Our x-rays get almost instantly get the Pearl artificial intelligence software. And it, can, and it can point out early onset decay. It'll point out bone loss, calculus, things that we need to see that we can use for patient education. So if we're going to talk scaling and root planning, for instance, well, I, if I show my patients what subgingival calculus looks like, well, then they can see it much better, much clearer, and much easier. It also tells us what approximately what percent the caries is in enamel and what percent it is in dentin. And we could look at an x-ray like this and say, okay, we see number 30. We might see the calculus on the distal of 30, maybe the mesial of 31. But what about the mesial of three? Is there decay there? What about the distal of 28? Is there decay there? Well, Pearl allows us to light things up to say, hey, there's something there with upwards of 94% sensitivity. So it's highly accurate. And again, I tell people it is not meant to be the diagnostic tool. It's meant to be the extra set of ideal eyes to assist us in our diagnostics. For us to take another look saying, hey, there are some issues here, some things we have to address. By pressing a button, we can 
invert the colors, and then we can also show our patients and use this as a patient education tool. So this becomes a patient education tool. So when it comes, as we're going to talk about tonight, to having the patient understand what scaling and root planning is, well, then the patient can clearly see the issues here. And it's a much easier explanation for our patients when we want to discuss scaling and root planning. When we take a full set of x-rays, if you notice, the radiographs have a color code next to it. That color code tells us to click on that particular radiograph because there's something there we need to look at. Pink being caries, greenish blue meaning calculus, blue meaning bone loss. So there's something there that we need to look at. So when we double click on this image, we see caries and we see calculus, and that's delineated by the red and the green image. Now, Pearl is a monthly subscription, but that monthly subscription in any busy practice should be able to pay for itself very, very quickly. So we begin to do our diagnostics. We take our x-rays, we might take a cone beam. And when it comes to perio, ideally we're gonna probe. Now this is not my statistic, this is an ADA statistic that 70% of dentists do not routinely probe their patients. Now you'd hope your hygienists are gonna probe, but we know there are problems there as well. Hygienists, in order for a hygienist to probe properly, they either have to take the time, probe, go back to computer and input the numbers, probe, go back to a piece of paper, write the numbers, or in the better case scenario, you've dedicated a staff member to hygiene, which now costs you more time. In our office with three hygienists, well, it's hard to really dedicate an extra staff member for probing and the hygienist it just, it, it does take time. It takes them time to do it. So what we do, one of our surplus assistants will help them out. But I'm a math guy and I'm a numbers guy. And I know that's costing me more money on that particular patient. Enter a company called Dentley Tech. Dentley Tech is a company that is developing artificially intelligence visualization products. Their first product, the Digi Probe, is going to be a perio probe that will automatically will record images onto the screen without the need for pressing buttons, without the need for staff members, just by placing the probe in the sulcus. The team behind this worked for a company that developed the face ID that we know for Apple, and that company eventually sold it to Apple. The computer engineering team actually has incorporated similar, similar technology into three AI-driven dental platform, the first being the DigiProbe. The DigiProbe is going to be the size of a regular Perio probe with a camera that will be able to read the pocket just by placing the probe directly into the pocket. It involves a one minute, what we call pre-scan of the mouth. So the probe actually, you scan the buccal surface of the teeth. So the probe actually knows what tooth it's on. And then you can press, put that probe into any sulcus and the probe will be able to read the sulcus. I'm gonna show you an early beta. You're the first group to see this because I got this video literally two hours ago. This is the brand new, um, beta version of the Dentley Tech probe, and it's super impressive. The one thing you'll see when there's bleeding, this probe, the camera will actually scan through the blood without any issue. So what you'll see here initially is the dentist pre-scanning the mouth. Obviously, this handpiece is large. It's not going to be this large by uh, production time. This is a beta model. He is scanning the buccal surfaces with the probe, and you get this immersive view of the teeth when you scan the buccal surfaces. Now, the image on the right, you actually place the probe, quickly look at the bottom screen, and you will see the probings show up in your bar graph. Look at the right, and you'll see the bleeding. 
yet the probe still registers very quickly. Now, we plan by next year at this time for this to be ready to show and be ready, hopefully, to sell. And it's going to be faster and smaller than this. But you see that there's no touching. There's nothing going on. He is probing right through blood. And this probe is unaffected. And it's giving you fairly rapid probing with the goal being a hygienist, being able to probe the entire mouth in two minutes. More importantly, the measurements are going to be the most accurate measurements in the industry. We all know now if somebody is probing and four people probe the same mouth, we're likely not all going to get the same readings. This will be accurate. And as you just saw, it you were able to get the reading through saliva and blood. Other potential lateral uses for this probe potentially are going to be crack detection subgingivally, open margin detection subgingivally, and implant recognition subgingivally. Now, my disclaimer, I'm an investor in this company. I'm an advisor to this company. I do not solicit investments, but whenever I show this, people ask me, can I invest? If you would like to invest, you can email Saul at kca-partners.com. He will hold in a high-level information session for anybody that wants to invest, and they can give you more information. Again, it's not a solicitation. I am an investor. I'm a believer. I'm an advisor. I think this will be the biggest game changer we see on the Perio side um, in years to come. Their patents are strong and they're solid. So for anybody, and, and I will say we have about 50 to 60 dentists already invested in this company. Of course, with a startup, there's risk, but there is a great advisory board and the technology they're coming out with is great. They also have two other products that I'm going to mention real quick before we continue with our perio. They have a sub gingival dental scanner. So imagine your trios, your itero, but this one scans sub gingivally through soft tissue and blood. So you'll be able to take a impression or a scan for a crown or a bridge or an implant sub gingivally without packing cord. So that's another one of their great technologies using the same platform of artificial intelligence. And they also have technology on a scanner that plugs into the iPhone, allowing the public and our patients to scan, not take pictures, scan their mouth for night guards, aligners, and sleep appliances. The accuracy is about 100 microns of that scan. So these are three products. You can email Saul at kcapart.com, or I'll show you another way to learn more about this at the end. It's important for us to probe. We know that 47 or so percent of American adults have some form of gum disease. We also know that about 65 million adults over the age of 30 years old have some form of gum disease. You also may know that the number one reason a dentist is sued in the United States year after year is the failure to diagnose gum disease. So this is important. And this is why that probe is going to make a big hit when it hits the market. And, and we believe insurance companies are going to demand that kind of high, accurate probing from every patient because of the issues we see with periodontal disease. Now, the interesting point to that is that despite the fact that gum, gum disease prevalence is super, super high, periodontists do less osseous surgery than ever before. And the reason for that is, besides the, the advent of implants, but the reason for that is as general practitioners, we're able to do much more to control gum disease at the practice level in a minimally invasive fashion. Now, it's important. We know that bacteria in the mouth can travel to other parts of the body and your bloodstream. Almost every week, we get one to three requests from an orthopedist asking us to clear their patient of dental infections because they need a new hip or a new knee. And just this week, one of my patients told me that her husband just had a new knee done and he had all sorts of complications. And the interesting part of the story is that he's got a lot of dental problems that he's been scared to get taken care of. And his orthopedist never asked for a dental clearance. And I said to her, I'm willing to bet 
the bacterial infection he got on his knee likely came from his mouth because of how much issues go, he, he has going on. So the statistics are there. 93% of patients with gum disease are at risk for diabetes. Gum disease increases pancreatic and kidney cancer by 60%. I mean, the, 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 the systemic connection is 100% there, and it should not ever be overlooked. According to the Cleveland Clinic, the Harvard Women's Health Study showed that high levels of C-reactive protein, which is a body inflammatory marker levels, were more predictive of coronary conditions and stroke in women that were in high cholesterol, than there were high cholesterol levels. C-reactive protein is an inflammatory marker in the body. Why is that important? Because this study showed the decreased C-reactive protein levels of gingival cervical fluid were observed at the end of the study after periodontal treatment. There was a 37% reduction in probing pocket depth and a 45% gain in clinical attachment and a reduction of about 57% and 90% 90 reduction of C-reactive protein levels in gingival curricular fluid after 45 days. The results show that the presence of C-reactive protein level is more significant in gingival curricular fluid and confirms the underlying inflammatory component of the disease activity in chronic periodontitis. So just from scaling root planing and doing the treatment, you were able to lower the body's inflammatory burden. We also see studies that show that diabetics are at a high risk for periodontal disease. An uncontrolled periodontal disease makes it more difficult to maintain adequate glycemic control. Recent studies five years ago showed an association between chronic inflammatory prostate and periodontal disease. So they found, what was found was actually the presence of similar bacterial DNA in both pr pr prostatic secretions and subgingival dental plaque in that same individual. And it's so, but it's not such a far-fetched theory because we know when it comes to periodontal disease, we're dealing with an open wound. We get tissue degradation, and that exposes the host to the bloodstream. Six months ago, my 55-year-old first cousin had a pedicure and developed an infection in his big toe. Treated with antibiotics, got better. A month later, started developing night sweats and night fevers, was totally, had a total systemic infection, went to the hospital, treated with vancomycin. Vancomycin shut down his kidneys. They put him on doxycycline. Fevers were up, down, up, down. Bottom line, from a toe infection, he developed an infection in his lumbar vertebra, vertebra and needed two plates. And there was only a couple of surgeons that were willing to do the surgery because of high, how, high, how risk it was, how high risk it was. So it's not a joke. Gum disease is a real issue. We should not be cleaning patients' teeth who have bone loss, bleeding on probing, and periodontal disease. We need to do therapy. How do we do that therapy? We In our offices, and I have three of them in the New York area, we go through a specific protocol. We anesthetize. We scale and root plane. We profi. We'll profi jet if we need to. We irrigate, we laser decontaminate, we use Perio Protect, all of which we'll talk about in the next few minutes. The therapy involves a comprehensive approach to disease, which includes mechanical debridement of the accretions and then irrigating with disinfectant solutions. You cannot get patients healthier if you leave, if you leave accretions on the roots. Roots have to be pristine. Once the roots are pristine, we do irrigate, and we know the studies are mixed on irrigation, but we know it can't hurt. It can only help. We profi our patients. We'll use a laser to kill bacteria. We reinforce strict home care. Now, here is where I will say many offices will fail. They'll, they'll do this part. They'll do the scaling, root planing, we'll anesthetize, they'll get all this off. Yet that patient is not brought back in three-month intervals. Come back in six months. They come back in a year. And when they come back in a year, you know what they're going to look like. They're going to look like this again. So it's really important to develop a system in your practice 
So your hygiene is not only treating minimally invasive perianal disease in a proper fashion, but you're also boosting your your profits in your hygiene department. You know, it, it's it's a known saying, a known entity that as your hygiene department goes, your practice goes. If you're looking to ever sell to a DSO or, or somebody else, and I partnered with a DSO this year, I partnered with a company called MB2. Again, if someone ha- wants information about that, they can DM me on Instagram at Vino Dentino, and I can tell you about my journey. But when they look at practices, they're not looking at how many veneers you're doing. They're not looking at how many implants you're placing or restoring. They want to know how many hygiene visits you have, how much therapy you're doing, how many hygiene, because that's the recurrent income of that practice. So by doing more therapy and communicating to your patient, you're now beginning to build a loyal following of patients that you can go ahead and get them to come back for three months recall, recare. Now you got to get the accretions off. We're always using piezoelectric in the office. We find them to be more comfortable to the patient. Why do we use piezos? Because it's controlled vibrations. The water is much less. Our hygienists can see better with only a few drops of water that come out. Even with a few drops, We don't get any heat, so we're not going to do any damage to the teeth. And because these devices need so little water, we're also able to dial down the power to low power to make it more comfortable for the patient. And here's why. If you look to your right, you'll see the Cavitron chattering up against the side of the tooth. And if you look to your left, you see the piezo, that linear motion. It glides, it slides up and down the tooth. If there's no chatter, your hygienist is getting better tactile tactile sensation, less hand fatigue, but able to be more efficient and able to do a much better job. Ultradent makes a great piezo scaler called the Ultra Wave. What makes this very, very unique is the fact if you look at that dial, you'll see it's green. That dial is color coded. So as you turn that dial, the colors will change corresponding to a set of tips that have that color band. So let's just focus right now. One, two, three, four, five. You see the dial slightly green. If you look at the first tip on the right-hand side, it's got a green band around it. That's for subgingival, fine scaling, low power. The tips are very dainty. They're thin. They're able to get subgingival if you crank the power on them you could break a tip, and that's why it's meant to be used in that color range. As you go up the dial, the color, the the strength increases, and the colors change corresponding to the other tips. So blue is typically your real big super gingival calculus. Green is going to be your subgingival calculus. Yellow you might use for post removal uh, and things like that. And you can even prep a small prep in the orange area. Not that we've done it, but you actually can. But this is a great piezo because it also has a bottle you can attach to it instead of that water tank and irrigate through that bottle. So it's kind of an all-in-one piezo that works really, really well. Now, we'll always irrigate our patients. And I know the research is mixed on it. But we do it because it's an extra belt and suspenders to kill the bacteria. Ideally, ideally, provodone iodine might be the best thing to irrigate with, but because of stains and because of the, all the people that are allergic to iodine, typically we're going to irrigate with chlorhexidine, and that bottle is going to be connected to our scaler. Once we do that, well, then we're going to bust out our laser, and we're going to use a diode laser to kill bacteria. They work well as an adjunct to scaling and root plating. Now you're not gonna get a seven or an eight down to a two or a three. That's not gonna happen. You'll get a bleeding seven down to a non-bleeding five. You'll get a non-bleeding five down to a non-bleeding three. But this is not LANAP. LANAP standing for Laser Assisted New Attachment Procedure. LANAP can only be done with an NDAG, and it's a patented procedure by a company 
called Millennium for their laser, the Periolase. But can you still control disease with the diode? Yes, you can, and you can control it very well. What's a diode going to do? Well, first of all, the diode laser will reduce bacterial presence and eliminate the biofilm. When it does that, it decreases or eliminates inflammation. And if you get rid of inflammation, the body is then going to heal. What you're also going to get during laser treatments is biostimulation. Biostimulation is really getting a lot of attention these days in the laser world. And biostimulation means taking good cells, bad cells, excuse me, and make them behave like good cells. It's what we call the voodoo of lasers because we don't see what's happening, but we see results. We're able to see advanced healing in the soft tissues when we're using a, a laser in conjunction with scaling and root planing, oral surgery, implant surgery. We're able to see reduced post-op discomfort. We're able to see reduced swelling and inflammation. What we don't see, but happens with biostimulation, we get improved lymphatics and blood flow, allowing areas to heal in a much quicker fashion. Is using lasers and perio something new? No, it's been around for a very long time. Here's a study published from 1988 by Professor Andreas Moritz. Andreas Moritz is a brilliant laser mind out of Austria. And this article was published back, you know, we're talking 25 years ago. The diode laser reveals a bactericidal effect and helps to reduce inflammation in the perianal pockets in addition to scaling. The diode laser therapy in combination with scaling supports healing of the perianal pockets through eliminating uh, bacteria. Now, I think this is a very, very powerful, powerful study because going back 25 years, Professor Moritz had this information. Yet it took the American Academy of Perio well into the mid 2000s teens to say that lasers might have an indication in the treatment of perio. It took them that long to play ball and come up with the idea that, hey, maybe lasers were really going to help. But the studies continued. 2015, diodes and chronic periodontitis. In chronic periodont periodont periodontitis patients with probing depths greater than five millimeters, Scaling and root planing plus diode laser is more effective in the treatment of chronic perio than when scaling and root planing is used alone. So, and there are an extensive amount of studies to show that it does work. What do we do with that diode laser? We'll use what we call an uninitiated or unactivated tip. We will place that diode laser in the pocket. We'll move it around. 10 to 15 seconds and go to the next pocket. I'm gonna show you a video example of what happens when you do that, but this is a healthy mouth, just to give you the demo. So 15 to 20 seconds in the pocket, moving around. We're at four tenths of a watt on the 810 wavelength in an uninitiated tip. You see any tissue build up on the tip, you want to be sure to wipe it off, otherwise the tip will initiate, self-initiate. Patient's not feeling any pain and she's not anesthetized. So it doesn't hurt. The patient does not feel anything at all. And we do this on the full mouth after our second scaling and root planning appointment. So our hygienist will do the half the mouth on the first and half the mouth on the second. And then we'll laser decontaminate. We'll make sure to reinforce home care. We'll talk about electric brushes, water picks, floss picks, which I don't love, but we'll talk about anything and everything 
to make sure their oral hygiene is drastically improved. We will schedule them for their three-month recare. Even if we got to change that date, we're getting a date in the book when they walk out. That's what's going to build a good perio program for your practice. That's what's going to bring your patients to ideal health. If they change it, we'll try to get them scheduled again. But most, believe it or not, don't. Because once they have had the therapy and they feel better, well, then they don't really want to go back. Most don't want to go back to where they were. For patients that have severe perio, five, six, seven, eights that are bleeding, we're also going to incorporate the perio protect system into their home care. We have found perio protect to be the best way to treat and maintain a healthy periodontium. And what it involves is a minimally invasive approach to the treatment of periodontal disease using chemical and physical debridement with mechanical procedure. And the goal is to eliminate or debride the biofilm, reducing the risk of bacteremia. We know that antibiotics do not manage a biofilm well. You can't just put someone on antibiotics and make their periodontal disease disappear. It just doesn't work that way. What we do know also is that hydrogen peroxide is a potent, potent therapeutic that you can use in your treatment and maintenance of a healthy periodontal, mouth, periodontal disease mouth. Because peroxide helps decrease bleeding and inflammation. There are no resistant bacterial strains. It penetrates aerobic and anaerobic cells to debride metabolic, metabolically the active and inactive bacteria. And there's no allergic reactions to peroxide. Here's was a study that was done with 3% hydrogen peroxide. It was used daily for six years. No, no carcinogenic effect. There was decreased plaque and gingival indices and wound healing was enhanced. So we know and this is an old study that peroxide is safe. The problem that we've had with peroxide is how to make it substantive, how to get it that it will stick around for a little bit. Because what else we know about peroxide, that a rinse with peroxide is not going to do a lot, but a 10-minute presence will kill bacteria. This was a six-month clinical investigation of a custom tray application of a peroxide gel with or without doxycycline as an adjunct to scaling and root planing. And what they found was mean bleeding indices dropped significantly only for the test group before scaling and root planing. And the tray peroxide doxycycline group was significantly different from the control. So they used peroxide and doxycycline. Two weeks post scaling and root planing, mean bleeding indices reductions for the test group were significantly greater than the control and remain so for both most comparisons. So this study showed that peroxide in a tray would be effective. The problem is that when we have inflammation, curricular flow cleans out the pocket area 40 times per hour under healthy conditions, but even more when the pocket becomes totally infected. So if I put peroxide there and I don't have a way to keep it there, it's really going to just flush it right out, the curricular fluid will. This study from 2002 shows that curricular fluid increases with infection, about 150%. The PerioProtect method involves making, taking alginates or scans, sending it to PerioProtect. Well, they will make you custom patient-specific trays. You'll have to send your probings as well based on the probings. And that tray will come with a gasket seal around each tooth. Then when you place a peroxide gel in there, you'll be able to push that peroxide gel into the pockets up to nine millimeters in depth. So no oozing out the back, no swallowing it. It's going to be forced into the gum. And that solves the problem of substantivity because that tray will keep it there for the 10-minute treatment period the patient's going to, going to go through. 
You see here, there's a gasket seal buckle and lingually around each tooth. And that's what makes the perio trays different than a tray that we can make in the office. The perio gel is a 1.2% per, per, uh, peroxide gel, or 1.7%, I think it is. It's able to kill the cell walls of bacteria and it oxygenates the pocket to change the microenvironment. That's what the trays look like. It's an FDA cleared medical device. And again, we, we take pristine impressions or ideal scans, and we're able to then send it to Paraprotect who makes these trays. In severe bone loss patients, eight, nine, suppuration, we will follow up or include a doxycycline calcium, a low grade doxycycline, which doesn't act as an antibiotic. It's very, very low grade, but it acts as an antioxidant in addition to the peroxide. You can actually place a few drops of the doxy doxycycline in the tray and it's a liquid and then place the perio gel on top of it. You can mix them together. And again, all these, the doxycycline and the perio gel are available directly through Perio Protect. We have the patient use the trays twice a day, 10 to 15 minutes per day. They could do once in the shower, once whenever they want. What's their bonus? It's peroxide based. So the teeth are gonna whiten in long-term use. What we do in our office, we start them at twice a day. And then we're able to, after a month, if they're doing great, we'll cut them down to once a day. And by month three, we're cutting them down if they want to, to three or four days a week. And usually the patients just stay on it for the full once a day because they feel their gums get better. What is the patient perception? What do the patients come tell us? Number one, they tell us the standard things we hear is, my mouth just feels better. Or are you going to hear, I'm not getting as much food caught between my teeth, or my gums aren't bleeding that much, or my gums aren't bleeding anymore, or I'm not getting bad taste or bad breath. These are all the perceptions that the patients can actually realize and relay back to you. What you're going to see is next to no bleeding on probing. You're going to see tissue that looks healthier, that when provocated is not going to bleed. This is the beauty of Perioprotect. And the question I always get is, well, how long do they have to use it for? And my answer is, if you're a diabetic, how long do you take metformin for? They have a problem. So therefore, if they have a problem, then they need to stay on this in perpetuity forever. Some will slack off a little bit, but when they do, when they come back for their recare, I know right away because certain spots will bleed again. And I'll say, you've been wearing your trays. And they don't lie. Doc, I stopped wearing them. I got to stop wearing them again. I could see the difference or I can notice the difference. These are the things that I hear from our patients. So here's a typical patient. Threes, fours, fives, sixes, bleeding on probing, over 60 bleeding points in our practice. We started them on perio trays twice a day and doxycycline in the tray because they had some vertical bone loss. Within one month, we were down to 20 bleeding spots with moderate provocation. Within 10 months, there was no bleeding on probing. Patient says the gums never felt better. Now, while not all probing depths improve, everything got healthier. And all I care is about health. I want the area to get healthy. So the patients will say, at that point, my mouth feels better. So to take you back from our diagnostics, once we figure out what's going on with our x-rays, we will probe, full mouth probe, scale, root plane, irrigate, laser, and perio protect. Now you can imagine if it's just scaling and root planing, that's one fee. If it's scaling, root planing, irrigation, laser, we've now added two fees. 
And if we're adding Perio Protect, the trace costs about 250 bucks. We're charging an additional seven to eight hundred dollars for the trays. So now when we talk about improving our hygiene department or making our hygiene more profitable, and at the same time, of course, making our patients healthier, well, this system works well. And I can assure you with three offices, and I recently, a year and a half ago, purchased an office where the dental IQ was much lower and nobody was coming for three and more three and four months recare. I can tell you now after one year, a lot of people are coming for three and more four month recare, and they're all more aware of taking care of their teeth. So it, it this system works. You need to spend time to communicate. And if you have the right tools and the right diagnostics to figure it all out, well then you will elevate your practice. I want to thank all of you for joining uh, me tonight, and I'm going to now be able to take questions. And again, this last slide, for those that weren't on early, if you have questions about anything, my partnership with my DSO, Dentley Tech, Catapult Crown, Catapult Grow, lasers, anything you want, you can always get me at Vino Dentino on Instagram. So friend me at Vino Dentino. I'll try to tackle any of the questions that we may have right now. Well, I'm going to I'm going to answer a question that I got earlier. And the question was, what do you do about codes when it comes, you know, for lasers and things like that? There's really no code you can use when it comes for lasers. You can use a 9999 perional adjunctive perional procedure by report, but there's really no actual code for that. So we do charge patients fee for service about $75 a quadrant when we laser. What lasers do I recommend? We use diode lasers in the practice. The ones we have most of now, the diode that we use, the Evo from Ultradent. It's a great diode laser. It's the most powerful one on the market. Kaylee asks me, can, can I tell you the name of the doxycycline I use? It's a doxycycline calcium liquid. And I get it from PerioProtect. They formulate it from their compounding pharmacy. Good evening. Where else in dentistry do you think AI can help a dentist? Well, I think, listen, AI is going to innovate our profession, right? We know we have it in x-rays. We know we're going to have it now in perinatal probing, scanners, things like that. At the end of the day, artificial intelligence is being used also in implant surgery today with the robots that are out there. So do I believe in a number of years we're going to put a patient's mouth with a handpiece in an artificial intelligence arm and prep a crown? Yeah, I believe that's going to happen. Do I believe artificial intelligence is going to innervate everything we do? Yes, within 10 years, I believe that's going to happen. What we're seeing now is the very exciting pimple of artificial intelligence, the beginning. But with things like the probe from Dentley Tech, the subgingival scanner, Pearl, all these exciting things that are at market are coming to market. I'm in my 30th year, and I so wish I was in my first five. There's a lot of fun things coming to dentistry in the next number of years. When I perform laser therapy, do I irrigate as well? I will irrigate patients prior to laser therapy but not at the time of laser therapy. I want to allow the laser to do what it has to do. It's a good question, Jesse. Um, but I'm going to, I will irrigate them prior. The last thing I do is going to be the laser in the pocket. Thank you for that question. Well, with that, I want to thank all of you for joining tonight. Oh, I got one more. Do I practice? Does your practice do anything with salivary testing? So I will test saliva use, with GC's test for acidity. I do not test for microbes because New York's a little weird with that kind of testing, but I do test for buffering capacity and for acidity with GC's test. But I do not test for bacteria in the saliva for perianal disease just because New York has got weird rules when it comes to that kind of stuff. But it's not a bad thing to do. All righty. So with that, I think we're going to conclude tonight. And um, I want to thank all of you for joining. As usual, thank you again for spending the evening with me. And I wish all of you safety and peace in our crazy world today. Thank you very, very much.